Hello, this is Jerry Spinelli with the University of California Cooperative Extension in San Diego County. I'm the Production Horticulture Advisor and today we are testing some sprinklers behind me. You can see four sprinklers that are spraying in those uh, buckets and then we can measure how much volume of water is in the buckets and from there we can measure distribution uniformity you may have seen our previous video where we were testing sprinklers with the radius of 30 by 30 so they were they were here and there and on those two corners so the so the square was a lot bigger now instead we are testing sprinklers in that smaller square that is 15 by 15 feet so a reasonable question that a grower asked me was, well, Jerry, I want to use these new uh, nozzles, these new sprinklers that are said to be more efficient, but they only spray at 15, at 15 feet. So instead of needing four of them to cover a square like this, now I need three by three, I need nine, and I need a lot more pipe. Is it worth it? Is it worth the expense? The, what I gain, what I gain in in distribution uniformity and therefore in in irrigation efficiency, if any, if I save anything, is it worth the effort? So this is a reasonable question, and that's why today we are testing those sprinklers there, and on the other side that you can see there, those other sprinklers, and right behind me you can see an anemometer that is that uh, three cup and the sprinklers that they're testing today are these hunter mp 2000s i hope you can see them without getting too wet and on this other side we're testing the rainbird r van that are these yellow ones here these yellow ones and these are belong to a family of uh, relatively new sprinklers that are called MSMT, multi-stream, multi-trajectory nozzles. And the others that we are testing are those Toro, PRN, these ones. We test them in our previous run a week ago, Toro PRN. They're also in this category of those that I'm testing right now. I want to show you just the nozzle here. These are the Hunter MP. And these are the Rainbird R Van, which are those that I'm, that I'm testing right now. And so then... With this graduated cylinder, we'll measure water in each of those buckets and we'll calculate distribution uniformity. And then we'll get the wind speed from the anemometer for each run. And then we'll be able to say, well, okay, these are more efficient under these wind speeds or these other are more efficient with less wind speed. So stay tuned. And we are testing the Hunter MPs, those MP2000, I hope you can read it, it's stamped right here on, this, on the nozzle itself. We are testing them with these pressure regulators, this body has a pressure regulator built in for 40 psi, I hope you can read 40 psi there, this is made by Hunter, and the Toro and the Rainbirds, instead we are testing them with this Rainbird pressure regulator at 45 PSI. And while do, during the evaluation we also measure our pressures with this pressure gauge and we have really good pressure. We're at 70, 67 uh, PSI. So the pressure regulator is going to bring that pressure down to 40 or to 45. So we know that the sprinklers are operating at their uh, recommended pressure. Okay, and now we are back in the office and this is the data. This is what we found out with this experiment. So this is um, a box plot of the um, 
water in the buckets. These are five runs in one day. I'm able to run the irrigation system five times for 30 minutes and collect all the data in the buckets. Each of these dots that you see on this plot corresponds to the water uh, in milliliters that I collected in one bucket. And you can see these are the MPs and these the, the, the hunter MPs and these are the Rainbird R van. And you can see that overall they apply the MPs apply less water. But it, you can also appreciate from this box plot that the 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 data is more is more compact, like it's it's all closed, and that's what we want, right? We want more we want more uniformity, so we want the same value on each bucket. In these other sprinklers, you can see that instead there is more spread, and that's what we don't like. So each each of these thirty six um, buckets, then I. I calculate the so-called uh, low quarter DU or distribution uniformity and each of these 36 dots gives me um, one dot in in these other graphs that is the graph of wind speed and against distribution uniformity and this is the main point of the study the uh, pink dots represent the distribution uniformity on the y-axis of the hunter MPs. You can see it's among the highest. The blue are the Toro PRN and the, the green are the rainbirds that tend to be the lowest. Um, interestingly, uh, we have on the x-axis we have wind speed and interestingly uh, the, the hunters decrease their distribution uniformity as expected um, as wind speed uh, increases. The toros seem to be a little bit more in, insensitive to uh, to wind speed, but but their their value is is lower. So um, I guess that the MPs uh, at the highest wind speed that we measured uh, are match the distribution uniformity on the toros. So it's still it's still you still gain by by using the MPs. In terms of general uh, distribution uniformity, in sprinkler systems, generally if you have a distribution uniformity of 75, you're doing okay. So when I get values with these MPs above 8 or as high as 85, uh, these are really high values for sprinklers and they beat they beat the other sprinklers that we had at uh, 30 by 30. So um, I guess what we found out is that the Hunter MPs, yes, they really have good distribution uniformity. It's worth it to install them at 15 by 15. If instead you're using these other sprinklers, you are not better off than if, if we're using sprinklers at 30 feet by 30 feet. So you, you probably could have saved some money in sprinklers and in um, pipes. So these, again, these are MSMT, multi-stream, multi-trajectory sprinklers, and the, the MPs uh, seem to be more efficient than the other impact sprinklers and the other rotor sprinklers that we tested in the previous study. The wind speed here is the average for the 30 minutes period um, during the evaluation. So this is, for example, is one day of uh, anemometer data um, for, for, one, for, for one entire day. And you can see that the, the wind speed tends to be um, higher in the early afternoon and then it goes down again at, the, at about 5 p.m. So from these graphs, I cut slices of, of, of data for those 30 minutes for each run, and then I took the average, and that average is what gives me the number on the x-axis of this graph. So we hope, we hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.